Hello there, welcome to part two of the Ultimate Light Tech Guide. If you would like to see part one, I will link it in the description and in the card at the top right of your screen. Without further ado, let's get into it. Fire Discipline Holding fire is obviously a very important skill for light tanks, as when you fire, you lower the consumption of both your tank and the bonus can be provided to you by any foliage within 15 meters. Aside from that basic principle though, for beginner light tech players, it should be emphasized that holding fire can actually make you a better player. If you're paying attention, you should know you're cannonating already, but if you're holding fire in a bush, or even active scouting without firing, Make a mental note of when you do and don't get spotted. Know at what distance a particular tank was from you. After the game, look at that tank's view range. Doing this, uh, making little investigations like this can refine your knowledge of the game to an impressive degree. Most good t light tank players, myself included, will, by the end of most games, be able to tell you the rough setup and crew level of an enemy tank purely by knowing when it did and didn't spot us, and vice versa. This helps you know if an enemy, enemy tank is using a CVS, or optics, or low noise exhaust, and it's a challenging but helpful aspect of top tier light tank play. Foliage Mechanics I've mentioned this many times, but it bears repeating. When you fire, you lower the camo rating of your tank and the bonus camo provided to your tank by all foliage within 15 meters of you. Firing will not reduce the foliage camo provided to other tanks that did not fire. Now when foliage is 15 meters away from you, yes, you firing will not affect its camo, but its camo will also be applied to your view range. As in, if you're 15 meters away from foliage, your view is impeded by it. Right? It's harder to see through. This is why players in all varieties of tanks will pull forward in order to see through the bush, then pull back until that bush is opaque in order to fire. That way they can extend their view range through the bush, and then pull back to put fire down range while still keeping the full concealment value of that foliage. That's worth noting that this concealment applies to standing trees and other foliage as well, meaning that a potent skill can be aligning the foliage of a tree between yourself and an enemy before firing. Here's a few examples. Very nice. So I can fire here because there's a bush in between me and him, so I won't actually get spotted going in here. Until right now. Some of those examples were from my best play series, so if you'd like to have a look, I will leave the link to that in the uh, corner there on the card, so have a look. Counter light tank play. Counter light play is potentially the most important skill to master. Enabling or contributing to the removal of your opposite, the most qualified opponent to dissuade you from implementing your advantages, can, on some maps, be the single most important kill of the game. Think an enemy light tank dying on Malinovka or Park, for instance. It opens up a huge amount of opportunities. So as a light tank player, you should try and play a wide variety of light tanks, even just to improve your knowledge on how to counter them. On many a map, when you spawn, your objective shouldn't be to just get to your favourite scouting position and go from there, but instead to try and counter and disrupt the enemy lights in their attempt to do just that. You are far more likely to be able to amass meaningful amounts of spotting damage and opportunity after the enemy lights, or the lights are dead than you are before. So if you feel it's magneted, playing a little passive at the offset with a view to countering these light tanks is by no means a bad play. 
But he's up late, he's like going low in the bush line on Pokorovka to catch enemy light tanks going high, or going here on Karelia Assault to extend a, a view into the swamp. If the enemy light tanks are particularly bad, they're likely to get themselves killed with overly, overly aggressive play, leaving the remainder of the game open to you to exploit. Active, passive, and recon by fire. It's worth being aware of the different types of scouting so that we can better define their uses. In my mind, there are three different types of scouting. Active, passive, and recon by fire. Active scouting means that you are constantly moving, using speed and positioning to avoid death. There is a high likelihood that you will be spotted during this, and it's generally best used sparingly and ideally when you are above a one-shot. This is the calling card of wheeled light tanks. Passive scouting is the opposite. This is where you're set up in a bush or advantageous position and you remain stationary while exploiting the vision that the area provides. This is highly complemented by binoculars and works splendidly in tanks like the Senlac and Type 64. Recon by fire is the most complex because it has a few different methodologies. The primary principle is that for all Recon by fire, you fire your gun, not for the purpose of dealing damage, but in order to achieve some change or information. For example, if I want to know if a particular particular position is occupied, I fire my gun at it to lower my camera rating, then I reverse behind cover and wait for my sixth sense. If my sixth sense goes off, it's occupied. If it doesn't, it isn't. This can also be paired with active scouting. We know we're more likely to spot a tank when it's firing due to its low camo. So when you fire your gun to lower your camera rating, it makes you more likely to be spotted and thus more likely to be shot at, thus giving you a better chance to spot the people shooting at you, as their camera rating is now lowered after they fired. CVS Mechanics I allude many times to my hatred of the commander's vision system and its effects on light tank gameplay. That said, it and the advantages that it provides are essential to be competitive as a high-tier scout. The main reason this is the case is a fact that not many people are aware of. It's because of the hard limit on stacked camo. So bushes, trees, whatever, can provide different levels of camo. You might have one that gives 10%, one that gives 20 another that gives 50 right? These values will stack, so for each piece of foliage that you have in front of you, the camo goes up at the 10 to the 20 to the 50, right? However, the maximum environmental camo that can be provided to a tank is 80%. Regardless of how many bushes or how dense the foliage in front of you is, the maximum concealment that can ever be provided to your tank by environmental camo is 80%. Unless an enemy is using a CVS. If an enemy tank or you are using a CVS in the scouting slot, then the maximum camo that foliage, that environmental camo can provide to a tank is 64%. This should help you understand just why the CVS is so goddamn powerful, and also why I hate it. Load premium first. This is a tip I most often employed in my French light tanks back when intuition wasn't an S-tier skill, but I think the thought process still has merit now. Simply put, I am more likely to load premium shells in my lights and mediums at the start of the game than at the end. Simply because at the start of the game, when the map is quite crowded, I'm more likely to find myself thrust into an engagement that I don't find preferable. I'm less likely to have space to move about and adapt, so it is more likely then that I'll need my premium shields. Certainly more likely at the start of the game than it is at the end, when the map is more open and I can pick my engagements and angles more freely, which is why, particularly in autoloaders such as your Amex 12T, Amex 75, those sort of tanks, I will load my premium clips first. Light bulbs and location. A huge part of light tank gameplay is about knowledge, both providing it to your team and gaining it yourself. 
For one thing, as a light tank, you'll sometimes find yourself active scouting. If you take a hit from a tank languishing at a distance, ping the location. Tell your team what and where that tank is. You never know who on your team is watching chat and will use that information to their advantage. Another way that you can gain info, however, is to watch the kill feed like a hawk. You should be watching your map all game in a light tank anyhow to look for avenues and opportunities, but an eye on the kill feed goes a long way as well. For example, oh, that tank just got a kill. Has anyone died on my flank? No? Well, then I know that he's on the other side. Oh, someone died next to me? Killed by the ISU-152. Okay, where can the ISU-152 be that he can kill that tank? Only one of a few places. It narrows down and locates enemy tanks without them ever needing to get spotted, and it's an important part of good light tank play. In a long bush line... Run. I see many times, I've been guilty of this myself, people in an effort to counter an enemy light tank move up a bush line hesitantly to try and find it. If you are trying to find a light tank this way, do it full speed. It is overwhelmingly likely that you're both going to spot each other at the exact same time, or very close to. When that happens, you want to have speed, so that you can get out and get into cover as quickly as you can without having to spend time accelerating. Being hesitant in this situation only makes you more likely to die when you both get spotted. So just... Just commit to it. Just keep your speed. And that will do for the light tank guide. Thank you very, very much. If you're interested, I have a fitness website called workoutways.co.uk. So if you're interested in making some positive health changes, head over there and have a look. I'd very much appreciate it. Uh, if you're interested in more videos uh, covering water tanks in this style, then I'll link up there. Uh, uh, card up there, link in the description, and we'll do another contest, shall we? Let's do... Let's do funniest customer service related story. Let's uh, do 1,500 gold this time. So, tell me your funniest customer service related story. Uh, give your username at the server that you play on in the comment, and I'll pick a winner two or three days after the uh, this video goes live. I will add that winner to the pinned comments a couple of days after. And yeah, so share your story and your standard chance of winning 1,500 gold. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. What skills are legendary, brutal stuff, like he does a thing. And screws it up. But the world of tanks is kindergarten, childish software. Real men play armored warfare, BVE. And his business model is actually insane. Making money off of stuff, but doesn't have to play a game. Also, his leadership skills are dope as fuck. He says, YOLO up, folks, and folks.